Hello everyone, my name's Stuart and I'm part of the student communications team here at GCU. Uh, now this week marks exactly one year since the UK went into a national lockdown as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was also this time last year that the university moved to a model of online learning as our staff and students adjusted to the new normal. Now to reflect on the last year from a staff and a student perspective, I'm delighted to be joined today by the university's Chief Operating Officer Susan Mitchell and fourth year physiotherapy student Chris Milligan. Hi guys. Hi. Hi there. Now I suppose the first thing I want to ask you both is to try and sum up the last 12 months. Like how have you found this crazy year from a student perspective Chris? Um, it's been difficult going from being on campus, seeing your friends every day, kind of getting that engagement, um, to then going to seeing basically nobody, not even your family. So it's been really difficult, but I think the online engagement from the university, from kind of just like Zoom calls and team chats and quizzes, um, it's kind of kept spirits up. But um it's been difficult, but I'm glad that we're starting to see the kind of the end of the end of it all. And the same question to you, Susan, from a staff point of view. Yeah, so I would say it's just been a huge upheaval, and frankly, it's been exhausting. I think everybody has really felt the the fatigue, but pretty amazed by how adaptable people have been, and pretty impressed by how everybody's risen to the challenge, but tough. So Chris, like you mentioned it there, the move to online learning must have been a kind of bit of a shock to the system. Like what's been the what's been the biggest challenge getting used to that new way of learning? I think it, it it's been technology. Like it's just all those kind of um kind of kinks in the system that you don't you don't really realise until you actually start to try and do it with connection problems and trying to get fifty students on a, a team call and then everybody try to get their questions across. And I think as kind of times went on and the years went past, it's definitely got much smoother and the transition's much better. But those first couple of months, it was, it was very tough. And Susan, you're one of the, obviously one of the key decision makers at the university. What has it been like trying to navigate the university through this difficult time? What's been the biggest challenge for you? It's been interesting, that's for sure. I would, what I would say is that we make all our decisions as an executive team collectively. And that's easier to say than do in this sort of a situation where none of us are in the office, we're not meeting each other in the corridor and having wee chats as you would do normally. So we actually made a decision really early doors that we were going to meet every day um, and have continued to do that. Not necessarily every day right now, but maybe four times a week, three or four times a week, pretty full on in terms of meetings so that we can be sure that we're making the decisions in the right way. We've also involved the student president in that all the way through, right from the outset. And I think it's one of the things that's really been a defining characteristic for how we've been. But one thing's for sure, doesn't matter how good your decision making, none of us really know quite what is going to change and how things are going to evolve. And we've had to change some of our decisions. We've had to be flexible and adapt to that. That's quite a weird feeling. Because it's not necessarily to say your decisions were bad in the first place, just that time's moved on. And that's been quite a new way of working for us to get used to. And it's intense. It's incredibly intense intense but it's been very much a case of you're not alone you're doing making all these decisions as part of a team which has, has been brilliant and Chris I see from where you are at the moment you're currently on placement uh, you're studying physiotherapy what's it been like um, juggling a placement during a pandemic well <laughs> it is I can only kind of the yeah, other way kind of Susan said it's been exhausting and my hat's off to kind of all of the NHS staff that have been doing this kind of full time for the last year. I've been on placement. This is my uh, week 12 of my placement. So I'm just coming to the end. This is my last week. And I found it incredibly tough um, just with the whole PPE situation um, and trying to kind of communicate to patients with masks on and they can't understand you. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really exhausting. But I think everybody has is kind of rose to it and is kind of shown the determination and kind of grit of kind of what the kind of public spirit's like. Um, so it's it's been good to see, but I, I'm glad that this is my last week and I get a, a bit of time off before my next placement. <laughs> a real baptism of fire, as they would say. Um, yeah. Susan, you, you kind of touched on it earlier, but how impressed have you been with the way like students and staff have kind of handled the pressures, the stresses, the unfamiliarity the last year? Do you know, 
honestly hats off to everybody for it because it's been it has been tough we've all had to learn new skills we've all suddenly communicating to people like this it's become our norm the technology doesn't it always work my computer died yesterday in the middle of a meeting and i'm scrabbling around to use my phone to get back onto a call we've all been there right you know it's it's there's nothing you can do about it but we've just had to adapt one of the things i've noticed which i really love and we want to keep when we're all sort of back hopefully on campus soon is how relaxed people a bit are about you know folk wandering by in the background animals appearing kids hanging onto somebody's leg nobody bats an eyelid how cool is that i think it's, and it's, there's much more sort of relaxed vibe to things which i think is really positive and says a lot about how we've moved on a year ago that would have been quite different but now people are much more accepting it's just your normal life is going on behind you <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tug on the heartstrings a bit here uh what do you both miss most about being on campus? I think the probably the biggest the biggest thing is is seeing people like in person. For instance, like I, I've I've met some some people that will be my friends for life, um, and going from seeing them every single day and kind of spending five six hours a day with them to to nothing like it's it's been extremely tough. And obviously, on, online's been great, but it's not the same. It's that kind of human connection, being able just to speak to somebody and even just when things are tough and being able to kind of get a, get a hug, like th- th- those things, that you don't get the sa- same interactions. Susan, I'm guessing you might your answer might be the same. Yeah, funnily enough, I think Chris absolutely <laughs> hits the nail on the head. It's the people, it's the chat, it's the banter. And for me, it's less about the people that I'm meeting every day, in any case, online. See them all the time and we're probably, you know, we, we see a great deal of each other. It's the people that I don't normally meet in the course of a normal meeting. So it might be some of the uh, catering staff that we have on campus who I would chat to when you meet them in the kitchen or in the corridor not seen them for the entire time and or or, you know a colleague in a team or a department somewhere that you meet when you're walking about it's those sorts of interactions just saying hi to people and feeling a you know a bit more human um i miss that but we will get back we will get there looking forward to that so looking to the future uh chris you're due to graduate this summer are you excited about your next steps? Where do you see yourself working? What's next for you? Yeah, um, extremely excited. It's been a kind of long road uh, for me. Like I had to do the Autumn University before coming to GCU um, just because I've been a mature student. So it's been about five and a half, six years to get to this point of nine weeks away from graduation. Um, so extremely excited, um, looking for, I've applied for jobs in Glasgow to just come back and work within the NHS. Um, I think the NHS is incredibly wonderful and like I'm really excited and hopefully, fingers crossed, I get a job um, and been able to kind of be a part of that kind of uh, organisation and kind of go on and help people. And Susan, what, what, get your crystal ball out. What, what does the future look like for current students at GCU? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, who knows exactly what um, conditions will be around in September, but I think we could probably safely bet we'll still be wearing face coverings. We'll still, hopefully, everybody will still be washing their hands. I know it's boring, but it's really important. Um, I think that I, I would love to think there won't be any social distancing on campus in September, but in my heart, I probably am expecting that, that there might be planning for all eventualities. Uh, mostly, we want to celebrate being back. I mean, how good will it be just to be able to see people? The, the, the buzz on campus is going to be amazing. I've, I've been back a couple of times since, and it's a lovely campus, but it's not the same without the people. So, you know, we really want to get people back and just celebrate being there and, and just really embrace it without losing some of the fab stuff that we've been able to do over the last year with the technology that lots of people love. And I don't want to lose some of that because it's really, really powerful and it's worked really well for us. So how can we take all the stuff that's really good out of the last year and then add that back into the mix of being back on our lovely campus? I can't wait to go and get a bacon roll from the canteen as well. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to ask each other? What kind of thing um, would you say that you've kind of took most for granted, Susan, kind of looking back, um, that now that you're really looking forward to, to doing again? I think it's um, definitely popping into somebody's office to ask them for advice on something. That kind of very, you know, I've arrived at work early. I can see somebody's in their office. I'm likely to pop my head around the door and just say hi. I miss that. And and I I really want to get that back. Chris, is there anything that you know now 
that you'd wish you'd known at the start of this that maybe would have helped you with your studying or, or your, your being and your placement and all the rest of it that you might pass on to somebody else? Be kind to yourself. I think like for, for like everybody is very self-critical and kind of you, you're, you're tough on yourself. But I think looking back, we've all been through something that's generational. Like, no, like it's, you, I, I probably won't experience anything like this again in my lifetime, but hopefully. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it's too easy to, to be tough on yourself. I think people just need to be a bit more kind to yourself and to others um, and just, just be patient and actually being able to say no and just give yourself a bit of time away. is There's nothing wrong in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a saying that I've seen quite recently, um, no is a sentence in itself. Like, you don't need to give any explanation. Like, just, you'd be able to say no, and that's that's fine, and you don't need to explain it. So, yeah, I think, I think that's what I would say to people. Be kind. Wise words. <laughs>